Kelsey Sand. Now this is probably one of the worst on the list. Kelsey Sand, number one worst thing you can use. It really ain't that bad. So as you've probably gathered already, what we're going to be doing in today's video is tackling the topic or subject of whether calcium sand or calci sand or whatever you want to call it is actually safe to be used with your reptiles. Because believe it or not, the reptile community online seems to have turned this molehill into an absolute mountain and things have just spiralled out of control and nobody is even bothering to look at the facts anymore. Generally, the cyclical conversation that people have goes something like this. Hey, I've just set up a new tank for me leopard gecko. I've got calci sand on the bottom. Doesn't it look great? Oh my God, you can't use calci sand? Why? Because you'll kill your leopard gecko. How? Haven't you heard of Impaction? It, if you mix it with water, then it clumps up. So, what do you think is going to happen if it eats it? That's such an accurate simulation of a reptile's digestive system. There's no way that could be wrong. Nah. Now, all, or like 90% of joking aside, just think about this for a second. After the mouth, the first cavity of the digestive system is the stomach, right? And what is in the stomach? But our good old friend, stomach acid, or in like vertebrates, hydrochloric acid. And back to our old friend, calci sand. What actually is this stuff? Well, it actually says on the back, I'll read it directly to you. It is produced from limestone, or in other terms, it's calcium carbonate. So recalling that we've got hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate mixing together, do you see where I'm going to head with this? Any high school chemist should be able to tell you that if you mix together an acid and a metal carbonate, you are going to form one, well, three things. You're going to form a salt, you're going to form water, and you're going to form carbon dioxide gas. In our specific case, that means that when we mix our limestone or calcium carbonate, with hydrochloric acid in a simulated reptilian gut, what we are going to form is just plain old water, carbon dioxide gas and calcium chloride, which is a highly soluble salt and so it will just be like floating around in the solution, invisible to you and I. What most certainly won't happen is that the calcium carbonate will form a great big clump and completely block up your reptile's digestive system. Now I know somebody's going to be wondering this out there so I will address it, what about the three reaction products? Are they going to cause any harm? Well, water's just plain old water, so you can forget that. Carbon dioxide's being pumped out by your animal's cells at a constant rate, so you can forget that too. Um, and calcium chloride, well, that is going to have a sort of lethal dose, but it is in solution, so you're just going to be having calcium 2 plus ions and chloride ions, which, if you don't know, are two of the most common, like, ions floating around in biological systems. So unless your reptile is eating an absolute ton of calci sand, it ain't gonna get any sort of issues from toxicity. Basically, guys, what I am trying to point out to you here is that what people spread around online is a complete load of rubbish. But according to a lot of people online, that it can still cause impaction. If you're going to be mixing calcium sand with water to try and simulate a reptile's gut, you aren't very inventive and you aren't thinking very far, if I'm being totally honest with you. So hold up, if what I've just said is actually the case, how come people's reptiles do seem to be getting, like, impaction all the time from this product? Because people are sending around the same damn pictures of the leopard gecko autopsy and whatever, and they aren't showing any new cases at any discernible rate, because there aren't any. When you consider the fact that absolutely tons of bags of this stuff get sold every single year, and the amount of people that have no issues with it, the thing of impaction being dead common with calci sand as a percentage of the cases of people that actually use it is entirely small. This product is not in any way, shape or form going to kill your reptile if and only if everything else you are doing with it is totally correct. 
As you can say with entire honesty that I've been a moderator in the Bearded Dragon Network, to which there's always a link in the description, um, and that has got over 30,000 members now, and there's like loads of new posts every single day, and I must have been a moderator for over six months now, and I have not seen any posts about genuine impaction, certainly not caused by Calci Sand anyway, in that group in that entire time um, and I've even been like looking in that group and using the information from it for at least a year now and I have not seen anything about it because as I say intestinal impaction as a like a result of substrate use alone is not a common issue what is a common issue however is people keeping their reptiles wrong generally so leopard geckos are sort of the biggies when it comes to calci sand impaction alongside bearded dragons but the thing is leopard geckos and bearded dragons are kept on the millions worldwide i am confident in saying that because they are just so popular and most of the information that circulates around online about them is incorrect so people will recommend keeping leopard geckos in tiny little crappy plastic boxes with absolutely useless under tank heat as well I say absolutely useless, but pretty much absolutely useless. Under tank heaters as the only heat source. They don't provide them with UV. They give them the incorrect like vitamin and mineral supplementation. And then for bearded dragons, people stick them in like tiny little 40 gallon aquariums. They put a few compact lights on top and call it a day. And then they start getting issues with different things. The reptiles struggling to digest and they've got calci sand in there and say so they, they just jump on the back of it and say that that's the single cause even though there's all these confounders going on because they just genuinely don't know how to care for their reptile properly. It's like saying you've got a car that doesn't work and just like taking a look at one wheel and saying aha the wheel is flat that is why my car won't go forwards but what you actually haven't looked at is the engine and there's a great big gaping hole in it because you've just left that out and that is what people seem to do with reptiles your care is totally wrong but you've got calci sand that's got to be the problem whilst it's not the best this stuff is not the ultimate bad guy the main takeaway from all of this is when you are looking into like issues or care guides or anything to do with reptiles or any other topic in general really, please just don't believe what you read or hear online in the first instance. Actually question it, think about it properly and if it doesn't make sense, can you come up with some other reason for something or other that might help you to improve what you are doing? And if that is the case, then don't just go with what everybody else is telling you. So now that I've done a tiny bit of basic science and ranting to hopefully clear this product's criminal record, uh, I still don't want to recommend it. And that is because it is not really a very like natural product. I can't imagine that there are many reptiles out there that do genuinely live on a substrate of ground up limestone. And so I am hesitant to suggest that this is the best substrate you can go for. Now, saying that, it is like a loose substrate, so it is going to provide digging opportunities and so on, which is a lot more that can be said for, like, paper towel. So I know that that lot might actually come as a lot of a surprise to people, that so many people could be wrong about something that is so simple, but it is just genuinely the case, and it is something that genuinely annoys me, that people just jump straight on the bandwagon with something and start telling people what to do or what they're doing is wrong, when in actual fact they genuinely do not know what they are talking about. And it is just so commonplace in this hobby, and in order to move forwards and to really follow nature's example, which is what I try to do to my like fullest potential, we need to talk about things properly. We need to like accept new ideas and accept new thoughts or like look at new science when it comes out, see if it's measurable or we can like use it to our advantage. And if that is the case, actually do it properly rather than just jumping onto age-old myths and legends about things like calci sand or lighting or whatever it may be with our reptiles because otherwise we simply are not going to move forwards in this hobby. And you know what? To make a point, I'm going to use this stuff. 
Um, I have spoke about it in my last Reptile Room Tour that I am going to be starting a leopard gecko breeding project and I've only got one male leopard gecko up there um, so I am going to be getting some females. Now I'm not going to be putting them in his enclosure straight off the bat, I will be like quarantining them, I mean I haven't got them yet but whilst they're in quarantine and they're in their own setup and it's not bioactive I'm going to house them on this stuff and I'm going to show you that this is not going to cause them any harm because I'm going to keep them properly. They're going to have UV, they're going to have space, they're going to have what nutrition they require. They aren't going to be stuck in a little box with nothing but this for company and be forced to like eat such a tremendous amount that they somehow manage to neutralise all the stomach acid or reach a, like, a toxic dose of calcium chloride which like I've said just ain't gonna happen with a happy reptile. So yeah guys, I hope that that really has cleared that topic up for you because it is just something so big online and as I've already ranted about for the past however many minutes, it just isn't based on fact and this video is, I hope, <laughs> um, but yeah. So if you did enjoy this video then please subscribe to my channel because it would help out a lot. I do videos all about bioactive enclosures every single Saturday and also other topics like this. So if you did enjoy this video do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.